Hey guys, I hope you're well. My name is Ashling and you are very welcome here. I'm here to talk about books and it is 2024 as I'm sure you're all more than very well aware at this stage. This year for me is gonna be the year of like knocking a lot of books off of my own physical TBR. So I'm not having a book buying ban or anything like that but I just feel really enthusiastic about reading the books on my TBR. So I did a count and I did a double count just to be sure to be sure and I've gotten rid of some books that I was just like oh, I'm never gonna read and I think basically the amount of books on my shelves that I haven't read it's 119 okay I have a bit of work to do but I'm actually really excited to do it and I was in town today and I didn't go into any bookshops which is mad because normally it's where I always want to go whether I have money or not but I just was like no, I got a lot of lovely books for Christmas. I have lots of lovely books sitting on my shelves. And so here we are. This is what we're doing. We're picking books to read from my bookshelves. Yeah, let's get going. Oh, actually, before I do, um, I called up to my brother's house uh, just before Christmas. And this wasn't a Christmas present. It was just something that he made for me. And I just thought it was really cool. Uh, he 3D printed little... Um, kitty cat bookmarks for me so he gave me four of them aren't they really cute I think the little cutie paws are supposed to grab onto the edge of the page but I'm kind of constantly afraid of um damaging my book and I just throw them in the middle anyway I've picked five books that I'm hoping to read for the month of January and this is gas because usually I would kind of know even before going into a month what books I would like to read in the coming month but I have no real super inclinations for this month. I knew that I was going to start January with a chunky book and um, it's something that I like to do because I don't like to get caught up in the kind of numbers game. It's very easy to log on to Goodreads or the Storygraph or whatever and see people have read like oh I've read seven books so far this year and it's like the 3rd of January. So what I do is I pick a long book and I read it and I just let people go off and read lots of short books to get their numbers off and I remind myself that I read for pleasure. It is my hobby. I'm not here to make money from it. It's not a hustle. It's something that I really love to do. Also, I hope you're enjoying my pyjamas. Um, but uh, yeah, so the book that I have started this month is one that's been on my shelves since last February and I was really excited to read because it is the prequel to a book that I really loved and it was published last February. I picked it up, I actually got it a couple of days before it was published because the bookshop had it out and I was all excited to read it and then I started to read and hear and see very mixed reviews on it and I was like, oh no, oh no. And it put the fear into me and because it's such a long book. The book I'm talking about is A Day of Fallen Night by Samantha Shannon. It's like 868 pages, so it is a bit of a chunky boy. So as I've mentioned, this is a prequel and it is a prequel to The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which I actually read about this time two years ago and really, really loved. So this one is set, um, I think like many hundred years prior to what happened in The Priory of the Orange Tree. So we don't have a lot of the same characters. I mean, there are mention of certain characters. I don't really want to say too much, but there definitely aren't any of the same actual characters in the book. Um, some of the same scenarios, some of the same kind of societies and stuff are the same, but we have a completely whole new branch of characters. And so this one is obviously set before the events of Priory and we follow primarily three different girls or women. So we follow Dumai and she is somebody who is set kind of high up in the in the mountains away from most kind of towns and cities. Then we have a girl called Glorian and she is essentially up to become queen um, when she's that little bit older to take over from her mum. And we also have something that I really like is an older, I won't call her old, but like an older uh, female protagonist, which is really nice to see from her perspective because I feel like in a lot of fantasy books, it's like really hardy young women fighting the good fight. And then we speak of kind of older or middle-aged women as past it a little bit. So there's a really badass woman from that like third perspective. 
Uh, Tuva is her name, and I think she's... Oh, I can't remember, is she in her 50s? But she's really badass, she's really cool, and that's really exciting. And they're all coming from very different perspectives. And we're set in a world where there are basically dragons. And most people fear the dragons, but some people absolutely revere them, think that they are gods, depending on their backgrounds, their religious beliefs, so on and so forth. The world building in this is absolutely insane. I feel like with a lot of fantasy books I read in the first few chapters I'm like blah 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 of blah 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 family are going down to do the blah 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 and eventually those blah 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 blahs become actual details that start to stick in my brain but um in this I feel like I'm I'm actually about halfway through so I'm over 400 pages in and um yeah I'm still a little bit like wait what I will say though the story is not hard to follow it's just there's a lot of <laughs> backgrounds a lot of politics a lot of history um i'm not supposed to be giving a review of this i'm just supposed to be telling you that i'm planning on reading it in january but um so far i'm really enjoying it it is what it is it's really fun it's sapphic it's got some really great female representation it's lovely to see a female author writing such kind of badass fantasy so yeah i'm really excited to keep reading this um as i said i'm about halfway through at the moment um so that is my chunky pick for january and then after that, I didn't really know what I wanted to read. So I have literally just gone to my shelves and just picked some books. And I think from the variety of the types of books that I've chosen, you'll kind of see, okay, yeah, I'm not in any one particular mood. So I'm just gonna, <laughs> I lost my stack for a second. Um, I'm just going to talk about the books that I picked. So I have four more after that one. The next one is, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. So this book I believe to be like a teen or tween kind of murder mystery. I actually don't really know much about it and the reason that this is on my shelves is because I was buying another book and it was like five euro to get free postage or I could pay five euro for postage. So I was trying to find like a cheapish book that I might actually read. And this was that book. I know it's um, a very well-known one anyway um, and has some very mixed reviews, but I do like a bit of young adult. I do like a bit of kind of teenage. I do like a little bit of middle grade. So uh, I was like, sure, look, we'll give it a go. This author also wrote Five Survive, which I believe is kind of quite popular as well. Um, I feel like when I was growing up, there were some like great books for teenagers, but there are really some great books for teenagers now and it's just such a great selection and it, maybe that's a lot to do with the internet in that um, like we had the internet when I was a teenager but it wasn't such a huge thing like it is now so maybe I just wasn't exposed to things the way that I am now and maybe it, it's a case of like I didn't have access to books then in the way that I do now so maybe there were some great selections for teenagers I don't know I don't know maybe this isn't a great selection but I, I'll read you the back the case is closed five years ago schoolgirl Andy Bell was murdered by Sal Singh the police know he did it everyone in town knows he did it but having grown up in the same small town that was consumed by the murder Pippa Fitzamobi isn't so sure when she chooses the case as a topic for her final year project she starts to uncover secrets that someone in town desperately wants to stay hidden and if the real killer is still out there how far will they go to keep Pip from the truth so it's kind of like we have a uh, young girl in school and she's solving a murder mystery that has already been solved by the police but of course she's gonna come and blow things open with her magical expertise um okay i think it sounds fun um evidence of like interviews and stuff and i did come across like a map at some point as well um, and like books and things so it's not just completely straight text which is interesting it keeps it keeps things fresh, I guess. I'm actually looking forward to reading that. Like, maybe it is terrible. I did come across a review on Goodreads and it was something along the lines of the minute that I read the words holy pepperoni, I knew that I was too old to be reading this book. 
Well, I'm going into this armed. I know that I'm too old for this book. I'm not the target market, but I'm still looking forward to reading it. And then another book that I'm definitely too old for, but I'm going to read anyway because I love reading books from all age groups. Um, This one needs absolutely no introduction. It is My Neighbour Totoro. I have this lovely little hardback copy and full disclosure, I have never seen this film. I don't really know what it's about. I have an idea. I haven't obviously read the book either and I know that the original story and the artwork is by Miyazaki. Um, so what I wonder is was this written after the film or after the storyboard? I don't know. The novel is by Tsukiko Kubo and it seems really cute. It's got like obviously the lovely artwork that you would expect from kind of a Miyazaki Ghibli book. Oh my god, I'm such an old lady. <laughs> my knees are so sore. Uh, the beloved animation classic by legendary studio Ghibli director Hayao Miyazaki, My Neighbor Totoro, is now a novel. So okay, the novel came after the fact. This edition features original illustrations by Miyazaki himself, accompanying a story by veteran children's author Tsukiko Kubo. Okay, so kind of what I told you so far. So 11-year-old Satsuki and her sassy little sister May have moved to the country to be closer to their ailing mother. Soon in the woods behind their spooky old house, Satsuki and May discover a forest spirit named Totoro. When May goes missing, it's up to Satsuki to find her sister and she'll need help from some new and magical friends. Well, that sounds bloody delightful. I actually can't believe I never really knew what the storyline to this was. So Totoro is a forest spirit. Totoro is also adorable. I never really knew what he was supposed to be. So there we are. Um, I just think this will be a little bit of fun. It'll be something kind of sweet to maybe ease me back in after plowing through that epic fantasy. Um, I'm really looking forward to picking it up. Uh, it's been on my shelf quite a while now actually. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Ah, oh, I'm excited for it. Good choice, Ashling. I say and I haven't even read it yet. The next book then that I'm gonna read is a science fiction and it's one that I'm really intimidated by. I've heard it's quite a difficult one to swallow and that you really need to be paying attention. And I was like, Pfft. I mean, I can read it. It's all good. And then I looked it up. And then I looked up where the name of the book came from. And I was like, oh. But anyway, that book is the first book in a trilogy. And I can't remember the name of the trilogy, but we're just going to keep moving anyway. The book itself is The Three Body Problem by Sitchin Lu. And I'm not going to read the back of it because it's a little bit long-winded but according to Wikipedia this is a Chinese sci-fi novel and it portrays a fictional past present and future wherein earth encounters an alien civilization from a nearby system of three sun-like stars orbiting one another in an example of the three-body problem in orbital mechanics and then I saw that the three-body problem was a link and you can click into it so I was like okay cool we go see what the three-body problem actually is and then of course we're into this really physics-y looking page on Wikipedia and it says that the three-body problem is the problem of taking the initial positions and velocities of three point masses and solving for their subsequent motion according to Newton's laws of motion and Newton's laws of universal gravitation. I'm just gonna hope that I don't need to know what that means to be able to read this book. I also know that the series is coming to Netflix on the 21st of March so I really want to get in ahead of that and read the first book. This was the first Asian novel I think to win the, was it the Hugo Prize? Which is really impressive. Also, I forgot to mention, it is translated by Ken Liu. Don't know if they're any relation or not. So, aliens, potentially scary physics, which is not a strong suit of mine. Uh, but I'm willing to give it a go. And I am actually, in fact, quite looking forward to it. I've just been really intimidated by it, to be honest. We'll give it a lash. Finally, last but not least, is a book by an author. Yes, it is a book by an author. Um, <laughs> I've read one book from this author before and that book was All the Light You Cannot See so that was by Anthony Doerr and then his I think his latest novel is Cloud Cuckoo Land 
and I picked this up second hand a while back, a good while back and it's of course been sitting on my shelf a while Um, I don't really know what it's about I feel like somewhere in my brain I'm like oh it's very similar to Cloud Atlas but I don't know if that's because they both have Cloud in the title or I actually picked up that information from somewhere. It is a bit of a chunky boy coming in at over 600 pages I think but um, the chapters are actually quite short um, so I feel like it'll actually not take me that long to read. I was the same with All the Light We Can't See. I put that off for so long thinking it was much longer than it actually is. But when I went to get into it then I read it through it really quickly because it has really short chapters. Um, so yeah, I don't know what this is about. I guess I'll read the back. Uh, bound together by a single ancient text, the unforgettable characters of Cloud Cuckoo Land are dreamers and outsiders figuring out the world around them. 13-year-old Anna and Omer, an orphaned seamstress and a cursed boy, an opposite sides of the formidable city walls during the 1453 siege of Constantinople. Teenage idealist Seymour and octogenarian Zeno in an attack on a public library in present-day Idaho and Constance, decades from now, who turns to the oldest stories to guide her community in peril that's interesting we've got a, a bit of past present and future going on um door has created a tapestry of times and places that reflects our own vast interconnectedness with other species with each other with those who lived before us and those who will be here after we're gone Dedicated to the librarians then, now and in the years to come, Cloud Cuckoo Land is a beautiful and redemptive novel about stewardship of the book, of the earth, of the human heart. I don't think I've ever actually read the back of this before because this has really sold me. I love books that are set across different times and different spaces but are interconnected somehow and it sounds like it will be really lovely like a really nice read i hate these large paperback editions that's the only qualm i have about this book and probably the reason that i haven't read it i definitely feel like i'm in my kindle era at the moment i won't lie i went out and bought a day of fall and night on my kindle after getting a quarter of the way through because i was like i just can't hold this any longer but yeah i think that could be why i haven't read it so far i don't have big book fear when it comes to reading books i just have holding big book fear i just hate the awkwardness of holding a big book um which is where e-readers really come into play i guess um for me anyway especially because i find it really difficult to carry heavy things or to hold heavy things as you've seen by my um little episode with my knees there i do have a disability though so don't make fun of me um i'm also not joking about that in case you're new here um <laughs> so yeah that's um that's the stack of five books that i've selected for my january today is january 4th i think um so yeah i got a good chunk out of a day of fall and night because i've had a little bit of a cold a heavy cold just getting over that now um the thing i like about that is i don't feel any guilt when i'm like sick because i don't feel like i should be going for a walk i should be going to do this i should be going to that it's like you should be in bed resting reading your books and playing your uh fey farm on your switch um has anybody else played fey farm because honestly i i can't stop i got it for christmas and uh yeah it's really lovely and it's the kind of thing that really gets in on my personality and just won't let me stop playing so how I've even gotten any reading done in the past while I don't know but anyway do you yourself have any specific reading goals for this year I feel like a lot of people I've seen online are trying to shop from their own shelves so yeah I'm saying right I'm starting out the year with 119 books I would like to at least half that by the end of 2024 so we're going to put a pin in it and see how we do. Um, there are some new releases that I would like to read during the year as well. I probably will listen to some audiobooks. Probably will borrow some books from the library. You know, just to satiate myself and my impulsiveness. Another goal that I've seen people setting for themselves is to read more intentionally and to read more slowly. So quality over quantity, which I think is a really good one to kind of adhere to always as well. Thank you so much for watching as ever. And I hope you're minding yourself. Hope you're taking care of each other. 
If you would like to, please hit the subscribe button, but never any pressure from me. We can't be everybody's favorite sandwich in the picnic, can we? No. I hope you're doing well, and I'll chat to you next week. Bye-bye.